This is 12.1 to 12.4 review. In number one, we're asked to find the inverse of the relation. This is a very simple, simple problem. All we do is just switch x and y values. That's all there is to this problem. And we are done. In number two, we're asked to test the following for symmetry with respect to the line y equals x. This one is also very simple. We switch, wherever we see x, we switch that to y, and wherever we see y, we switch that to x. And we check to see if we end up with the same equation as we started out with. This is not the same because this is really 6x plus 5y equals 7, which is not the same as 5x plus 6y equals 7. So we explain, this is our work and our explanation because it says show work and explain is we say not same as original equation. So not symmetrical with line y equals x. We do the same thing for b, switch x to y, switch y with x. We just, wherever we see x, we change it to y. Wherever we see y, we change it to x. This is the same because multiplication is commutative. So y times x is x times y, which is the same as what we started out with. x times y is equal to 10. So we say same as original equation. So symmetrical with line y equals x. That means if we were to graph this, we would have symmetry with the line y equals x. The graph is a hyperbola that looks, <laughs> that looks kind of bad, um, looks like this. It has a point at 1 comma 10 and negative 1, negative 10. If you put in 1 for x, you get y equals 10. If you put in negative 1 for x, you get y equals negative 10. And as you see, it's symmetrical with the line y equals x. This is the line y equals x. Number 3, we're given g of x and we're asked to find the inverse of g of x. So g of x, if we let that be y, we now interchange x with y. And we solve for the new y. So we isolate the new y. These two cancel, and we get y, which is now the new y is called inverse of g of x, is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared. A quick way to see if we did this right is let's put in 1, for example, into g of x, the original function. So when x is 1, we get square root of 1, which is 1, plus 2, we get 3. So if we put in 3 into the inverse function, we should get 1 back. So let's see, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So that does check. That was our quick check to see if we did this correctly. So let's write the steps for finding an inverse. Step 1 is to change g of x to y. Write y for g of x. Step 2 is interchange x and y. And step three is to solve for the new one. So this is the process we're going to follow for numbers four and five. So we're quickly going to do that. So we're going to call this y. Oops. And we're going to interchange x and y. And we're going to solve for the new y. So we add 1, and we multiply both sides by 2 thirds. 
And there is our answer. That's the inverse. The inverse of h is 2 thirds x plus 1. You could either write it this way or um, I'll distribute the 2 thirds. It doesn't matter. Let's do number 5. Let's change f of x to y. Interchange x and y. So this is x now. All the x's are y's. This one is a little bit trickier to get y by itself. First step is to cross multiply. We put the x over 1 and we cross multiply. Then we distribute the x. Here, we're multiplying both of these by x. And multiplying 1 by 3y plus 1. Now, we put all the y's on one side, and anything that doesn't have y on the other side. This is just regular algebra, just solving for a variable. You put all of the things that have the variable on one side, and anything that doesn't, have that variable on the other side. Here's the tricky part. We factor out the y. This will get us y by itself. And now we just divide by 2x minus 3. That gives us y. That new y is the inverse of f. So that's going to be 1 plus 5x over 2x minus 3. In all of these, if you have time, you could easily put in a number for the original function, see what you get for the y value, put that y value into the inverse, and you should get the original x back. You should test those as we did in number 3.